topic for today's session is digital tools for design for additive manufacturing for which we will invite dr madhukar somireddy sir sir will you start now yeah uh, can you see my screen i don't know which yes screen. yes sir the design for additive manufacturing the first slide is on okay. the screen uh, just give me a second i'll try to share okay um so um, we are going to see uh, some of the design principles when you are uh, designing a part for additive manufacturing uh, so so what is uh, design i mean uh, what's the uh, idea of design how do you design a part or a product so these are the uh, main uh, steps when you are designing a uh product mechanical product this i think most of you know uh what are the main steps in the design process uh, when you are uh you know designing a mechanical product especially uh, so mainly there are uh, you know uh, you're going to find what is the market need of a product and based on that you will come up with different ideas and it can be you know what is the function of the you know product and what is the working principle you will uh, find uh, this let me take a uh, point uh, i think yeah so what you do is in the concept stage uh, so that that's the first stage in the product design and in the product in this stage what you're going to see is uh, you will you are going to define the function of the product and what is the working principle and uh, the next next stage you will uh, have a embodiment uh, stage where you will have to uh, uh, figure it out what are the different parts in the product and how, how what, what is the model and how do you assemble different parts together so in the final stage you will have to go for the detailed design of each part in the product so these are the main steps in the product design so and uh, so this is a iterative process any product mechanical product design is a iterative process you will initially get a prototype and then enhance uh, different uh, functions of the product and you will again uh, redesign the products so how is uh, different in additive manufacturing that's the question this is for the traditional manufacturing but is it different for additive manufacturing that we are going to see so if it is different what is different from traditional design process so it's again you know this is what we are going to see mainly design tools what are the design steps and what are the design principles if you are designing a part for editing manufacturing uh, so mainly uh, if you are a design let's take a simple component any component a mechanical component mainly depends on four things it has four main pillars what is the material of the part what is the function of the part and how are you going to manufacture it what is the shape of the part they are very much interlinked you can't you know skip one you can't give priority to the material or just only the process they are very much linked so that's one of the very very uh, important thing in additive manufacturing so the designer job is very critical in uh, you know additive manufacturing the designer has to have idea some amount of idea about different materials and also different uh, idea about different additive manufacturing technologies and what is the main function of the you know part and what are the different shapes that we can make uh, using 3d printing technologies so material se uh, selection is interconnected with the shape process and function so process again in 3d printing if you take 3d printing we have seven major processes and each process can accommodate only limited materials you can't have you know what are the material you want uh, but if you are selecting your process first and you're going to you're going to limit it you know for only certain materials 
and also some process may give you know whatever the shape you want some processes may not able to give you you know the uh, what are the shape that you're expecting in uh, art so we have seen this figure and uh, we have seen seven major processes that you know we have uh, order bit uh, fusion binder jetting and direct energy material extrusion so we can see further uh, classification in each process and the most important thing that i want to mention is what are the materials so let, if you are considering powder bed fusion what are the materials that it can accommodate so that we can see here i hope you can see my pointer here uh, so it can accommodate what are the materials these colors will define what are the different materials that it can accommodate so you, if you're fixing let's say if you're uh, you have a 3D printer for the for the bed face 3D printer. Then you have a limited options in the material, and you're going to stick to only that materials. That's the one important uh, consideration. You know what are different additive manufacturing that you have at your hand or at your workshop. Based on that, you're going to select the materials and then design the process. I know to me, you know, based on your design calculations, you're going to select the materials. So why it is important in additive manufacturing? What is, you know, if you don't have right uh, process parameter, right materials, uh, right design, you will end up with very bad design. You know, you're going to waste, you know, uh, time, material, and uh, by the way, the additive manufacturing is expensive, especially if you're considering a metal additive manufacturing, because the material powder is expensive and the time also it involves after printing, post-processing, that is also expensive. It's not easy. Let's say this CAD image looks very good, but if you are planning to print this one, let's say this is the orientation that you're planning to print, you may not get the right uh, part. It may collapse like this so you have to be very careful how are you placing the part when you're printing what is your orientation of the part and does it need any support structure or do you have to redesign the you know again the product so those are the some of the questions you have to ask yourself before you are designing a part So some of the key parameters in design for additive manufacturing, uh, I said the material is one of the thing because you know not every uh, material can be accommodated in 3D printers. There are limited materials, and also some of the 3D printers have limited build volume. If you have a part that is about one meter length, and uh, if you want to manufacture with the metal additive manufacturing powder bed fused you know 3d printer you may not able to you know have such a large machine so they have limited build volume uh, so again the support structures what are the support structures do you need and what are, what is uh, what are you expecting you know what properties are you expecting in 3d printed parts what is the orientation these are some of the important parameters that you have to keep in mind. Uh, so how are these uh, parameters influenced? You know, these are the process parameters greatly influence the final quality of 3D printed parts. So printing pattern that we have seen, hatching pattern, we have seen how it is important in uh, 3D printing. Layer thickness, printing direction, what is the speed of the printing? build orientation how do you place the part in, in a, while you know preparing the uh, build uh, so what what are the support structures you have uh, while 3d printing those are the some of the powder characteristics also plays very important role in surface uh, you know uh, quality of the 3d printed parts is it a uh, very fine powder or is it coarse powder or uh, you know uh, and geometric features how is your CAD model is designed? Does it have a sharp edges or sharp corners? 
any sudden change in the cross section they also matter in getting you know very uh, good quality you know uh, 3d printed part so how do you account all these parameters in the design so it's not an easy task you have multiple parameters that actually go on the quality of a 3d printer uh, 3d printed part how do you account this you know several uh, process parameters uh, in your design that's a, one of the challenging tasks of a designer uh, if the designer is considering a 3d printer for producing a part it's a not easy task i mean it's literally one of the you know time taking and it needs a lot of uh, experience uh, you know if a, uh, if you want to get the part right in the first print itself we will see uh, uh, some of the uh, cases of uh, what are the challenges if you look at this slide uh, as i said the machines uh, cannot accommodate different materials they have limitations on different materials because let's say if you're taking a metal 3d printer the laser uh, may be in some uh, printers it may be low power laser in some printers maybe high power laser you know the based on the laser speed laser dia and laser power uh, so the materials you know the selection of the material uh, depends on the you know machine specifications and also size of the part we have we have discussed that you know in the machines have a limited build volume that's also matter material properties we already spoke about this you know you may not get uh, properties same even if you use the same material same design but printed with the different machines and one of the speaker uh, you know specifically mentioned that repeatability and reproducibility is one of the concern in 3d uh, printed parts and that's a you know a, a one of the issue uh, designer has to keep in the mind so let's see how the orientation of a part uh, influence the you know different uh, quality of the you know, part are built look if this is the black one is the part that you are planning to print and the red one is the uh, build plate. Uh, so if you are expect, if you place the part in this direction, th there are several possible uh, uh, orientation. You can place the part in several orientations, but uh, if you don't select the appropriate orientation, you will end up with either bad print, or it may cost more, or even you know. Uh, you you may have to you know do several post processing processes to remove the support support structures. Let's say this is the uh, uh, first case, and if you produce a part in a three D printer, it needs support structures in these areas. The gray areas are the support structures, and if you orient the part in this direction, it needs the support structure here. So orientation of a part uh, in, you know, when you are preparing build uh, in a slicer software, it's important how do you place, how do you want to produce the part? So it mainly affects uh, part orientation has effect. What is the support material it required? And uh, if you're expecting very good surface finish on this side, you don't want to see support structures you know support structures don't give very good surface finish after you know cutting out uh, support uh, support structures can you print a part uh, that can uh, you know self support let's say if you want to produce this uh, part you are uh, you are placing part on this you know two legs uh, while printing can it self-stand are you know where does this you know center of gravity lies does it uh, lie on the same uh, you know the uh, line of uh, jet axis uh, is it different if it is different it may not able to self-stand you have to find uh, the right orientation 
So otherwise, you know, after printing certain height, it may collapse. And that's again, a, you know, that's not, uh, it's going, you're going to waste some material and the time and the build time. So it's important to know different possibilities. What is the right one? Uh, so how can we produce the uh, part, uh, good quality part uh, in the first build itself? And again, if you look at the build orientation, you know, the other example here, the black one is the uh, part that you're planning to produce. You can either place it vertically or you can place it on the horizontal direction. So this is not preferred because it requires a lot of support structure here on this surface because it's overhanging surface. It needs some kind of support structures. So if you, I mean, if you place it vertically, it doesn't need any support structures. So you have, that's again, uh, you know, uh, the main emphasis is build orientation that greatly influence the uh, build time. And also, you know, in the coming slide, we will see uh, how it's going to affect the you know, residual stresses too. Uh, here, same thing, Some not every trading Printing process require support structure. I think very, I mean, most of them require, but one of one or two 3D printing process do not require support structures if you are, you know, or, you know 3D printing overhanging structures. Uh, so you have to very careful when you're selecting a 3D printing technologies also. Uh, let's see some of the, you know, build failures. Uh, here you can see uh, several uh, metal 3D printed parts. Uh, what you can see here is, uh, you know, a failure of your part. You know, it is delaminating from the build plate. This is the build plate. Uh, this is where the part is 3D printed. So uh, it's made why there is a delamination and uh, why the 3D printer is uh, you know, uh, peeling off from the base uh, build plate. It's mainly because of the residual stresses. Residual stresses are uh, developed when you apply uh, repeatedly heating and cooling. So it, because of the thermal uh, gradients inside the material, you have uh, residual stresses in the material. So uh, residual stresses in this uh, part. So that leads to the failure of the uh, uh, parts. Here also you can see if the part is too long and it can uh, you know undergo warpage, and also that will lead to some kind of cracking in uh, 3D printed parts. Uh, so what is the size of the part and how do you uh, print and how do you avoid residual stresses and uh, that's uh, also important. Uh, you have to you have to think what uh, what can go wrong while 3D printing is uh, the important uh, thing that you have to consider. Sir, can I ask one question, sir? Is this yes. crack is this specific to some particular material or? Uh, it, um, I think it can happen if the printing parameters are not, uh, right printing parameters are not used. That means if you are, uh, you know, printing in the uh, same printing pattern, all the layers are printed in the same way. Uh, the printing strategy or scanning strategy is one of the critical parameter. Uh, so I think it can happen any any kind of you know materials uh, not limited maybe materials has some effect uh, but it can happen any any um, build cases if the right printing parameters are not used okay sir thank you and here the other example here we can see it's a hip uh, i think uh, uh, it's in some kind of medical uh, part, I think, hip plant implant, I think. This is here also, you can see some kind of cracking. Uh, here, I mean, it, the material, uh, I think, uh, it's a different kind of supports uh, structure is used uh, on the base. Uh, 
Uh, so these failures are, uh, you know, the images what I'm showing here are not recent images, but I think they were initial stage when the, you know, trying out the metal 3D printing. Once you figure it out, what are the right process parameter, how right orientation, you can avoid, uh, you know, these kind of failures. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's not that you, if you use the right printing parameters and, you know, everything uh, properly, you don't see. But what can go wrong is, um, what I'm explaining is, these are the different things can go wrong. If you don't, you know, design a part properly, or if you don't use the printing parameters, right printing parameters. So support structure, what you can see here, and this is the part I think <clears throat> here. Uh, I think let me uh, uh, let this is uh, the part that you want to print. And the supports uh, material here is given on both sides. So if you are, uh, if you don't have the right, right support structures, again, it can, uh, it, now you can see some kind of what is here. Uh, it, it is uh, deformed. And, but here, if you look at this, the support structure is different, not same as in this. And now the, if there is not, any you know what page in this in this uh, print uh, so and that how do you define how do you get this kind of support structures and that you can do you know either uh, optimize you can use a topology optimization or you can uh, design in the CAD uh, model and uh, um, you can simulate that um, you know three D printing process. You can see what are the residual stresses that you can you are going to get in different areas of the 3D printing. So based on CAD design and the simulations, you can figure it out and modify your design accordingly to avoid any residual stresses. Same here and the support structures. These are the parts printed. Each part has uh, support structures. So support structures, if you don't plan properly, the time for building the support structure can be high. If you orient in different direction, you can minimize the you know, number of support structures or volume of the support structures. That will reduce the ever built. And also, uh, you know, some support structures, you know, you, if you, after printing, if you want to remove the support structures, it can be done with, with you know, um, you know, manually, or it may need some additional uh, machining process. Uh, that's also important. Uh, how is your stru support structure is attached to your main part? Uh, is it easily removable or does it need additional machining process, uh, you know, after 3D printing? Uh, quality of the surface, it again depends on the different parameters. Uh, here, if you look at this bottom surface, you may not get uh, a you know, good surface finish here because it may have, it may need some kind of uh, support structures. And also on the corner, generally you will see the uh, stepping pattern because it's a printing. It is, it comes with the process. You know, it's inherent with the 3D printing technology. And fairly, but you will see a decent surface finish on the top flat surface. So, and also powder characteristics. So is it fine powder, coarse powder? So that also define, you know, uh, influence the quality of the surface finish. Uh, so here we can see three examples. And this is the part, uh, I think, let me, uh, where can I find it? So this is the part uh, I want from the, uh, you know, 3D printer. So how can I uh, get with minimum or no support structures? 
so so if i place it you know if i you know if i don't have any in anything here if i want to get it uh, from the 3d printer i have to you know provide the uh, support structures here and this is a hover and structure so it needs some, some kind of material to support over and over and uh, you know section uh, but if you can uh, remodel in the cat uh, let's say uh, like this it doesn't need any kind of support structures it can you know uh, you don't need any additional uh, material for this so it's important to, uh, you know uh, to figure it out what is the right geometry to minimize uh, support structure, you know, uh, to minimize the uh, support structures in the printing. So this one doesn't require any kind of support structure. So it is slant. So anything, you know, this can be around 45 degrees. So while printing layer by layer, uh, you fairly, you know, uh, can uh, uh, get this part without any uh, support structures. So what is uh, what is the limitations of overhang? So anything above forty five degrees doesn't need a support structure. So you can see uh, this is the part which is three D printed with fifty degrees, forty five degrees, and forty degrees. So anything more than 45 doesn't need any kind of support structure. But if you're coming down below 45, one, what can happen is this surface may not be good, first thing. And if the angle is very, very low, you may not get this area at all. I mean, this section at all. It's very challenging to get a three-dimensional part in this section. And also, how do you, let's say your part, you know, your part has uh, different holes, you know, uh, any mechanical, you know, uh, part can have uh, multiple holes or multiple cross sections. Let's say if you, if that has, if your part has a different side hold, uh, so how, what is this, you know, right shape uh, to get, uh, you know, with, without any support sections? So if you don't have any support, uh, if you don't have, uh, if you try design, you may end up with uh, uh, bad paint. So here the surface finish is not good and moreover, it's not circular. You can see some kind of uh, shape here. But however, the whole size is small, you may able to make it, you know, you know, you may able to get a good print. Uh, if as the size of the hole increases, uh, then the challenging, it's a very challenging to get a, a decent print. So how do you uh, uh, avoid this? Then uh, you have to edit somewhere. You have to find uh, right uh, geometry to avoid this kind of, uh, you know, situation. Uh, so um, people, I, you know, um, this is the ideal model. So, but it is not circular what most of the uh, designers do they will uh, so it doesn't require any kind of support structure if you're having a cad model uh, like this but if you have a cad model uh, you know uh, whole circular hole it requires support structures so but if you don't want to support structures you can design a cad model like this after 3d printing it needs additional Machine process to get a circular shape. So that is what uh, happens in most of the uh, metal 3D printing cases. So you may not able to get the right, you know, uh, features or right geometries in every, you know, everywhere in the part. In some, you know, areas it may need additional machining process. Same thing here. The design is modified. So if you have this design, it requires additional support structures. And uh, if you can modify that CAD model, and you mean, you know, you can avoid the uh, support structures. Same thing here, we can see what is the minimum gap, you know, 
that can um, we can that we can get from the 3d printer anything less than two me uh, two mm gap between the supports is good doesn't require any kind of support more than that requires support uh, structures if you don't have support structure this area will be uh, bad you don't get the right geometry uh, right quality in this area let's say the three different cases here and let's say this is uh, some mechanical product uh, you have uh, it's uh, uh, it's a mechanical product designed for traditional manufacturing method it has three different components but if you are planning to manufacture with the 3d printing it requires a lot of support structures you can see that all the green lines are the support structures even inside you need to have support structures but if you can modify the cad model to you know simplify the cad model like this you know you just have only one, two parts in this case you have top section as a one part and bottom section as a other part but if you look at the second version you have only one geometry okay and the inside uh, uh, cross sections okay. so it requires you know uh you modify but however it requires some kind of uh, uh, support structures internally can you modify again redesign the cad model again to avoid minimize the support structures inside so if you have uh, this kind of uh, cad model and even if you uh, 3d print it you can't take out this internal support structures it's very challenging to remove the support structures from inside of the geometry it's not easy so how can you avoid that so again you have to go for iteration and uh, design change the cross section let's say this cross section doesn't need any kind of support structure inside so it only requires the support structures at the bottom surface so inside doesn't need so the, in now you can see how the geometry of a part can you know influence uh, the uh, uh, it, it it's mainly depends on the designer if designer has some kind of understanding uh, about three D printing process and uh, how can we minimize the support structures so that uh, helps uh, you know you know getting the good quality. Uh, in 3D printed part. Uh, so let's see uh, uh, what are the uh, uh, you know how uh, design strip design tips to minimize minimize residual residual stresses. We know that any I uh, know metal 3D printed part can undergo certain kind of deformation. It can have residual stresses. So how do you avoid the residual stresses in a 3D printed part? So you can select right printing parameters that includes the appropriate scanning strategy. Uh, look, we have three different types of scanning strategies here. Uh, so the most ideal one is this, which minimizes the residual stresses. If you are having a printing strategy, this one or this, it, you know, you will see the residual stresses in 3D printed part that ultimately uh, leads to a rocking in 3D printed part. Uh, and also, uh, you can use a thicker build plate, you know, to minimize residual stresses. So you can uh, transfer heat from the uh, 3D printing, 3D printed part to the build plate. So. So you can avoid large areas of uninterrupted melt pools. So if you are, you know, following the same printing uh, printing pattern, you will see a large melt pool, and uh, that may lead to the more residual stresses. And check uh, if you have any sudden change in the cross section of a part. If you have, and modify the CAD design to avoid uh, sudden changes in the CAD. Uh, you know, in the cross sections. 
and we already spoke about importance of the part orientations. Let's say this is the part you want to produce and you can place it in several ways. But what is the ideal way and what is the best way to get the part? Uh, is this the right one or is this the right one? How do you figure it out? Uh, you, that comes only, you know, most of the design principle for additive manufacturing you will learn when you start actually doing. So it comes with the experience, I can say. But however, if you have some idea about, you know, uh, 3D printing technology, design principles, you can, uh, you know, uh, get the part right in the first build. So you can, uh, you can, you know, create, uh, aim to create self-supporting designs. Uh, you can, you know, some in some cases, uh, you know, support uh, support structures also help to reduce the residual stresses. You know, they will take away some kind of heat from the melt pool, and they uh, will help in reducing water and uh, residual stresses also. If you have right orientation, you can reduce the build time and also cost. And uh, remember, if you are uh, designing very complex geometries, it may not be possible to get the geometry all the time from 3D printing. So, you know, it may need uh, support structures. Uh, you know, uh, you have to think uh, what are the different challenges while uh, you are 3D printing a part in the design stage itself. So we know supports are very important, but how do you, uh, what are the main supports? Let's say there are uh, three kinds of supports. Uh, one, uh, mainly, the, you know, uh, you use the supports for overhangs. Uh, you know, if you want to print overhangs, you need support structures. And you can also, I know, have support structure to reduce, I know, reduce our or avoid the residual stresses in 3D printed parts. So support structures can take away some kind of heat from the melt pool and from the you know 3D printed parts. So it can minimize the warpage and distortion in 3D printed parts. They act as a heat sink. So primary supports are the one you actually include in your uh, CAD model when you are designing. A part itself, you know, you need this kind of support structure for this overhang. So you will design that in the CAT model itself. Secondly, supports are the one generated when you import the CAD model into the build software. So when you are trying to develop a G code for the machine, it will figure it out where do you need the support structures. And the you know, the second uh, support structure generated while preparing the build uh, are called secondary uh, supports. So it is always too good to know, uh, you know, where where can you get, uh, you know, where can you, where do you need the support structure and include them in the design stage itself. So that's important. If you can include them in design stage itself, you can able to optimize the part and you can able to get the uh, right quality part. One small question, sir. Yes. Is the quotient of expansion of the support material and the 3D print material, if they're vastly different, is it going to cause any stresses and things like that? Uh, it's, it's the same material also we use for the support structure also. Uh, for support okay. structures, it's not different material. Okay. Uh, it's the same material. So okay, okay, thank you. So here look at this image, and these are the support structures which are included in the design stage itself. Same here also, these are included. So the design designer knows the orientation when he was designing. This is the orientation that I'm expecting a part to be uh, while 3D printing. So you can, uh, the designer can include this, you know, kind of uh, support structures in the design stage itself. Let's say in this case, 
designer has only this geometry uh, CAD model. When he, uh, when the designer imported to uh, build software, he will get this kind of support structure uh, while he's generating a G code. So these are the secondary uh, support structures generated while preparing the uh, G code. So again, you can figure it out what are the different, uh, where do you need a support structure, where you don't need. Based on that, you can you can either edit in the uh, edit the CAD model and redesign, and you can import again. Uh, Recording so that, stopped. Yeah, that depends on. Um, so it's the same thing. So you can avoid. Look, I mean, this is a simple part. So mainly what you can get from this figure on the left side, you have a sharp edges here. So all the sharp edges require uh, support structures. On the right side, what you can see, they have a chump, uh, chamfer. So they don't need any kind of supports here. So this blue one, gray color are the supports uh, to the overhangs. Here you don't see any kind of supports. So they have chamfers. So if you have a certain chain in certain change in the cross section, try to avoid that certain chain in the cross sections. Uh, you can redesign. Uh, you can include the charm for our you know fillet to avoid the supports. So we have seen that what is the ideal way to get uh, the you know holes. Uh, so if your hole size is very large. I think you better want to modify that to this uh, shape so that you can mission it after 3D printing. Uh, you will have a very good, you know, uh, uh, circular hole. But if you're expecting large hole to be printed, you may not be able to get circularity. You know? But if the hole size is small, it's possible you will get the uh, very good uh, hole. So design tips for support uh, structures. So remodel holes. If you have holes, change the cross section of the holes to diamond shape and try to use chamfer wherever possible. Avoid certain changes in the cross section and you can remove, you know, and so overhangs try to, you know, um, have the cross section uh, are angle greater than 45 degrees, but doesn't need any uh, support structure. So yeah, so you can uh, plan for you know um, machining uh, if you have lot size holes and change the whole shape and uh, you can machine after three D printing also. So uh, we can see here what is the right orientation in this figure. Uh, and this is the right orientation. Uh, how it just need support structures on the bottom itself. So if you're placing this cylindrical uh, cross uh, part horizontally, it requires support structure inside as well as uh, on the bottom surface also. <clears throat> so uh, the uh, other important factor in design is optimization. Uh, you may able to get very uh, optimized part uh, from the FES software, but you may not able to produce in 3D printed uh, in 3D printer. It's mainly because you know uh, if you are planning to produce this part in 3D printer, all the red color areas require support structures. And if you place this optimized part, Vertically in the build up uh, in the 3D printer, here all the red areas requires support structures. So, how do you place the part uh, in 3D printer? How do you want to produce, uh, you know, in 3D printer? Is uh, build orientation is and significantly influenced the uh, the uh, support structure uh, volume. Yeah, so again, you can see, um, so you have structure holes here, but you may not able to get here 
sort of clarity. It requires more of our uh, support structures here. But if you can edit them, uh, modify the shape of the circular to, to diamond shape, like the all the walls, circular holes are changed. So after 3D printing, um, so it doesn't require any support structure if you change the shape. And after printing, you can machine the holes here. So that's the best way. I mean, most of the industries also do uh, follow the same process. Yeah, the same thing here. We can see it is optimized part, but you know, again, you have uh, uh, you know cellular structures here. It's not fully dense, uh, fully dense part. You have only more material wherever required, wherever uh, you know you have a blue, uh, wherever uh, required. The other uh, areas where you don't need. Uh, more material is uh, made with the cellular structures. That's the same thing here. So you can uh, optimize and uh, you know produce the part, but again, you have to know what kind of uh, you know cellular structures you can use in 3D printed part. Again, you can see uh, this is the uniform cellular structure. Uh, you can see across the cross section uh, hall, you know, you can have the same cellular uh, structures of the same size. But in this case, you have a large size uh, cellular structures, you know, here, small size cellular structures. So you can also change the, uh, you know, uh, volume, you know, in some cases, you need more material here. Here, you don't need more material. So you can change that in the design stage itself. So design tips for optimization is uh, identify critical surfaces for machining, you know, like holes, circular holes, you can avoid that. And uh, where, where is the minimum wall thickness? How can you get 3D printed? Or if it is not possible, what is the way to get the minimum wall thickness? Can still support Positioning and removal. How can you even if you have a support material in 3D printed, can you really remove it after 3D printing? Or do you need to redesign the CAD again? So think of it. So design for orientation and uh, you know orientation has a significant effect on the you know support structure, the amount of support structure it need. And that again depends on the build and you know, influence the build time and cost of the you know process. So we have to figure it out what is the right orientation. Again, residual stresses keep in mind you were going to see the residual stresses in 3D printed one. So there are many, many parameters that you have to account while designing a part. So it's not an easy task, and it's one of the challenging tasks in to manufacturing. Design for additive manufacturing is is very important. So a designer has to know uh, topology optimization and what are the different lattices. It has to know about the uh, different additive manufacturing processes and I also have to know about materials. Um, yeah, so there's many things that designer have to I have idea about every aspect of the uh, manufacturing process. Uh, so here we can see what are the design uh, software that are useful for ready to manufacturing simulation softwares. So these are very helpful if you're planning a career or if you're planning to use in design of a part for 3D printing. So you may have, you may want to check out these softwares. Yeah, there are more uh, softwares here. Yeah, we can see, I think, uh, support structure. We already have seen the same images here. Uh, uh, here, we, see, this is the main part, but it has uh, support structure. The volume of the support structure is more than the real part. And how do you remove the support structure is still a question, and uh, it's still a challenging problem in uh, 3D printing uh, field. Here also, even though the, the machines can produce uh, this, you know, rocket engine, but 
you can still see the support structures hanging here, which are not removed. Right? So they require post-processing. Most of the 3D printed parts require some kind of post-processing. Uh, even if you want to get a you know surface finish or remote support structures, you need to machine holes. Uh, yeah, that's uh, some of the uh, design guidelines. Uh, you can I think I posted in what WhatsApp this image. You can go through images. It will give you some idea. Uh, so what are the design principles that you need to consider while three D printing a part? Yeah, I think that's everything I have for now. Um, if anybody has questions, uh, I can take. Just one, one small question, sir. The, it's actually going to involve some heat transfer. Uh, so, if somebody is doing any heat transfer analysis to see the the any thermal stresses or residual stresses leaving during the processing because of the sectional thickness variations. Yeah? Uh, also, sometimes if you have the support structure is very huge and the actual printed layer is so thin, the heat flow and the, that kind of surface tensile effects. Yeah? Is it possible somebody can try uh, heat transfer certification processing uh, using the existing softwares? Yes, uh, that can be done. I think, but most of the existing FEA software companies they are trying to include a different module for I uh, you know uh, simulating the residual stresses. Where do you see the residual stresses? If you have a part in one orientation, if you have a part with the support structures, so but they are in still you know uh, very very initial stages. The uh, the FES software are not are well matured for simulating uh, uh, you know this you know the thermal simulation. But software companies are working, and researchers also are, you know, trying to figure it out. So uh, they are developing different algorithms for this. Okay, especially for the making the fiber reinforced uh, polymer matrix composite.